What is up, everybody? This is Evan with the Lemons with Clemens today. <clears throat> today, I have a special guest, a returning guest. It is Mitch Wallen from my previous podcast of a discussion series. This is a new series that uh, actually got started because of Mitch uh, and has and kind of started to become something I'm hoping to regularly do, um, not just with him, but with other people as well. Uh, but Hopefully, Mitch continues to want to come and do this, and, and even if it means that we do something more. Uh, Mitch, thank you so much for joining me once again. I know we, we were trying to do some audio and technical difficulties on my end, mostly, but we got to figure out how you're doing today. Good, man. Two things. Uh, most things do start because of me, and life has pretty much been like one audio technical issue since 2020. Wow, you're really just knocking it out of the park right there at the beginning. Of it. Um, <laughs> it's so been coming off mute I, for a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you're actually. I think I wonder how much has changed or progressed because of 2020, and how much we've had to put into the effort of like uh, the Zoom calls, the Skype, the Microsoft Teams, and stuff. Like, how much more technology has gone into it? Uh, I mean, with the compression. I mean, we're sitting here talking to each other, and we were just talking about it. How the sound is not going to be the same as what our actual microphones are putting out. So it sounds like it's going to be choppy. Like you're, you know, in, you know, India with just a headset trying to call me, uh, to sell me something or some bad customer service, but hopefully your new microphone sounds pretty, uh, a lot better than the previous one. Uh, so Mitch, <laughs> thanks you for saying said, that. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I drop something and I move on to the next subject. So you don't get, uh, get a chance to chime in uh we were talking a little bit the other day and we had a couple ideas of what to talk about was there anything in particular that you wanted to bring yeah actually um i liked the topic of essentially you know the job market today hiring you are a manager you work in the front line you know firsthand if there's one thing I know about you, it's that you have a strong opinion about that and pretty much anything else. <laughs> well, I <laughs> so, have a strong opinion about everything. That is absolutely true. Yeah. And it just so happens that I, I work in an industry that is, is also struggling with hiring people and, you know, new hire attrition. And um, from your perspective, one, how much does it suck? And two, is there a uh, light at the end of the tunnel, so, so to speak? Well, actually, let me, I'm going to do this backwards. I'm going to hit that second question first, because I am right now in a very difficult situation because I thought the light was already at the end of the tunnel. I thought we were coming to the light. I thought we were coming out of this. I thought everything was over. I, we did, you know, me working in a restaurant, a busy one at that, um, you know, we actually got busier because of to-go food. DoorDash blew up and everybody stayed at home and just got their food. Um, so we never stopped. And so we just had to change how we did things to stay successful and to and to stay um, relevant. But it was, it was tough. I mean, we were doing, we were working differently. Instead of managing people, we were the ones doing a lot of the work with everybody. Well, I mean, we already do, I think, more so than most other restaurants, the one I'm at currently. Um instead of just staying to the side where you were a part of it. But this time we were a hundred percent of the shift instead of 50 or 60% of the shift being a part of it on, on, you know, actually doing the cooking or taking the orders to uh, the guests or the DoorDash drivers or what have you. Um, So as the vaccines came out, I was like, this is it. We're going to open, we're going to open up, you know, and then not only that, but the mask mandates started to come down Things started opening up again. Um, all the restrictions were getting lifted. So I thought it was going to happen. And then the summer hit. And less and less people were applying. I've gotten less applications on, in general in the last six months than I've ever seen in my life. Um, and I talk about this, actually, what we were talking about. I've kind of touched on it on my Facebook page or touched on it on other podcasts, but uh, one of the things I was saying in one of the, my other podcasts, I think people are actually just enjoying their summer because last year they didn't get to. So no one's going back to work um, because everybody was locked up for an entire summer. So now they're trying to get out because there aren't restrictions. There was also uh, a lot of incentives not to go to work. Uh, and that was the other 
light on the end of the tunnel is here in Missouri in June, the unemployment benefits were going to be dropped the statewide. I mean, they still had some federal ones, but it, they weren't going to get as much money. So we were we were ready. We're like, oh, baby, here we go. June and July, we're about to get all these applications. We're going to be solid. We're back, baby. That's the, that's the entire time. That's all we were thinking. And it turns out that didn't happen. And I don't know, I guess there is this, uh, it's called like the renter's moratorium or something like that, where they don't have to pay rent and also the landlords can evict them for not paying rent. So there's no incentive once again to go back to work if you're not paying your rent or your mortgage at that point, which is the large chunk of your money, and then you're getting the lesser benefits from unemployment, you're still fine because you can still pay pay for your other bills and get by. Um, And I think that's where it came from. I don't know, to be honest. I I truly, I don't know if the job market's gone or if people just don't want to work, which is the way that I feel that, because even the people that come in are not good. They're not the workers I used to get. You know, I've been doing this for a decade now, and it is nothing like it's ever been. And I don't know, man. It's uh, and it is it is harder uh, because again, you're getting less applications, so you're trying to hold on to the people you do. But then, and I know this isn't just here. This is, and we're actually doing better than every other restaurant basically in town um, where I'm at. Everybody, there are horror stories basically where there's. Skeleton crews. We're not running skeleton crews, but everybody's working a lot. But, excuse me, but it's as if you can't get rid of somebody because you're short-staffed, and so expectations and standards begin to slide. And so that just makes it harder for everybody else that's already working because you're trying to just, everybody's in survival mode now, um, as, as a business, that is. So I don't know. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? I don't know from your perspective. I know for me, it, it's it's tough, man. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to say is like, as you were talking and I was listening and it was making my own mind spin, uh, I, I was kind of just following along the path that you were. Uh, I felt the same way. I was super excited to get the vaccine. I was super excited to get back to the world. Uh, I'd spent the year. I was very, very disciplined uh, to, to the, you know, against I think the average person even when it when it came to maintaining my bubble and uh, keeping six feet distance and, and that kind of nature so man I was I was pumped to go to a bar to go wherever and I was just gonna right. go talk to everybody you know hi how you doing <laughs> but <clears throat> turns out that didn't happen and um, to everything that you're kind of focused on here I, I I've got to say I'm of the same mind I totally agree that we've that people generally speaking are perversely incentivized to not go find jobs, to not work. And I think that the catalyst of that is, in fact, the uh, the eviction moratorium. Um, people don't have to worry about getting kicked out of their homes. I do think that it's realistic that people are in need of a little extra help right now. It's been a tough year. Things are weird anyways. Um, it's a super volatile uh, economy has been for the last several years. It's been a lot of uptick, but uh, a lot of mixed reasons why that could be. With that in mind, I guess if I was president for a day, I would lift the eviction moratorium, but I would not eliminate um, the extra funding for unemployment benefits or uh, paying the, um, the child tax credit up front and at a monthly rate. I think those are good things. And that gives people, kind of to your point, um, some peace of mind. They can afford their home. And then if they're able to go find work because they can safely do so, then that's great. You know, I think, you know, I agree to an extent. Um, I I agree that people do need help because some people genuinely can't go back to work out of fear of their own safety due to health conditions. Um, I think that everything that's happened has made it harder in general for child care. And so some people can't go to work because of child care reasons. Uh, it, there's a thousand different reasons for them to get help. Now, there's one thing I think they should do. And here's something that not a lot of people are talking about. So with the eviction moratorium, the landlords aren't getting paid. There is nothing out currently 
for the landlords to not have to pay their mortgage on their properties. So the well, problem now... That's, that's not true. The banks aren't having to collect. That, I mean, the banks are the first ones that came out. I don't know if you recall, because it's obviously been some time, but the very at the very start of all of this, um, Trump met with the heads of all the big banks. And, and that, that was kind of the... The sentiment that they were trying to convey is that everything's going to be okay. The big banks aren't going to collapse, and we're also not going to take your house from you. So uh, you're right. The the landlords, the property owners, which where's the biggest uh, dollars at or where's the most dollars at? It's in property because um, they're not making any more land anywhere. But I, I think that they are disadvantaged, but not not to some sort of a – significant degree that the rest of the world's not having to deal with this. I mean, we got to keep things in perspective. This well, kind of shit happens. So wait, hold on. So you're saying, years. you're saying that I just want to clarify and, and see, I, I had an understanding and I want to make sure that I have the understanding correct. So I'm under the impression that there isn't a safety net like there is for the actual renters, for the people that are renting out those places, meaning they still have to pay their regular bills. Now you're saying that there is actually a safety net for those landlords and for those the the people that own those properties that they're going to be okay. I'm not saying that they're going to be okay. I am See, saying so that they're not having. Be, the reason I'm bringing that up, all right, I'm going to cut you off, is because you've been doing this this whole time. <laughs> well, that's my show, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but there is a lot of talk about. And a lot of chatter, at least for me watching the stock market and watching how the banks are moving, because I am I like to buy into the banks and the banks are doing really well. Actually, if you're watching the stock market, all the banks are doing well. But one of the things that they're also doing is buying up properties. Mm -hmm. Now you're able to get these properties with tenants in them for pennies on the dollar and they're buying them out. Do you? That could become, you know, and to go almost conspiratorial, that could become an uh, end up being like a government housing type of thing. Oh, if you man, wanted you to, just if you a want movement, <laughs> yeah, you know, if you wanted to go that route, there's an opportunity for that to be there. I'm not saying that's how it's going to go. I'm saying that that opens up a pathway in a way for that to become a thing. If it, if we were to finally become into this complete welfare state, which I, I don't really, I'm just kind of throwing that idea out there. But I know because I personally own a house and I have a mortgage. And one of the things I took advantage of is they had, with, like you said, with all the banks, they had something for people not to have to pay their mortgage due to COVID or things related to COVID or if you lost your job. I don't know how it goes for the actual business owners. I know for, as me as an individual owner. Um, and I was able to forbear three months of mortgage, not pay any mortgage for three months without any proof, without anything. And just say for three months, I'm not going to pay my mortgage. And then I signed some papers, sent it back. And I'm back to pay my mortgage. And because of everything that's going on, my mortgage is now cheaper because of it, because it can change my contract and my, my loan. What'd you do with that money you saved? What I do, I paid off a credit card. I got myself a new water heater and and it's actually a tankless one. That's a whole other story. I, I want to talk that. about that sometime. I'm, I'm, I'm in the, <laughs> the water yeah. heater. Bucket. It was this guy. <laughs> his name was Shad. He was English. It was hilarious. It was a, it was a definitely it was an entire uh, it was definitely a, an experience, man. Uh, you know, but I I think though the way that I use that money is probably going to be a little bit different than a lot of people. I I saw. A lot of my friends on Facebook, and I don't know if if you saw anything similar, but because I didn't get the unemployment checks, I only got this for the, well, I, I got the stimulus, I guess, but I mean the, the consistent unemployment checks, but uh, not having to pay that rent, I put it towards something that benefited me long run. I see a lot of people just taking that money and just, it's free money. I do some, I know some people did use it in the right way. Okay. But a lot of people's I, like shit. So you're 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 right. But it's not we don't need everybody to do the same thing with the money. So kind of like sure. you, I, I did the same thing, man. I uh, I paid off the only debt that I have is my home. And and I'm excited, you know, that, that that's a great thing. Uh and I've been fortunate in terms of 
my job and haven't lost my job or, or any income throughout this time. I was able to shift to a, a work from home environment. You know, my, my family, they have a family business. It's an essential service. It's on the front lines. Um, you know, I say the front lines. It's it's, uh, it's, it's it sounds like combat for some reason. Uh, I don't yeah, know. It's like we're going yeah. to war. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about what's happening in Afghanistan, too, at some point. Um, oh, man. Not to I, I digress <laughs> on that. Where, where I guess I was going with that, though, is that we spent uh, our money on paying down debt. And that's important to not have a, uh, an entire population that's going vastly into debt. Uh, we saw what happened when back in 2001 to 2007 and 2008. And, you know, we really just kind of, to a degree, recovered. The other side of that is that we need cash flow. I mean, we all need cash flow to pay our bills. And that's what happens for all the, the people that are going out there and spending money and um, I can't tell you how many times I looked at buying a camper in the last year. Uh, <laughs> I'm surprised I did. I think at one point I even looked up like big ass boats to go put down at the lake. And, you know, anyways, <laughs> that's a, and, and instead I, I paid off debt. So I, I guess I'm pleased with what I did. But we need people to buy boats. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my campaign uh, slogan as well. Buy Elect me boats. and buy a boat. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, and I think you hit the nail on the head at the beginning of this before you lost what you were saying is that, um, <laughs> is that, is that the, uh, people don't need to spend their money in the same ways because you need the money to go everywhere because that money is paying for people's jobs. Mm -hmm. It's paying for that business to stay open. And then the tax money is also going to the economy to continue it going. Um, the, the problem though is. There is a surplus of consumers. You have all this free money. So all these people wanting to buy shit and do stuff with their money. But there's no workers. So how do you supply that demand? Man, that has been. <clears throat> and that speaks to the raising prices. Uh, remember what happened with wood over the last year? That was fucking crazy. All with this, what? The price of wood. It just. Oh, when yeah. sky fucking high, man, <laughs> all of a sudden everybody's, you know, ready to It's like, are, are you serious? There's trees all around here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been to a few restaurants that have had signs on their door, essentially calling out that they were on a skeleton crew, crew and to be patient, essentially, with what the cook times were going to be. And I was understanding of that. And um, I bet it is kind of a survival mentality. You talked about your, your team having to work a lot of hours. And even though it's not a skeleton crew, uh, shit wears on you, man. It's tougher to find time to unplug and take a break from work. I I, I would say uh, my probably greatest challenge with work over the last year is the fact that I was <laughs> having to work too fucking much and having to, to carry things into what I consider to be my uh, my life space as a part of that work life balance. You know, that's I'd say that speaks to me more than the other part about the money is the the ability to unplug. Um, to detach. I mean, because with everything going on, and I think that speaks to everything uh, with COVID, I think the biggest thing that isn't spoken about is the mental aspect. Just how hard it's been on everybody. Now, before it was everybody's locked down and they couldn't see their friends. Now it's the people that are working, they're all overworked. They're all stressed out. They can't get anybody in. The managers are stressed out because they're trying to keep people. They're trying to hire new people. The, the other the parents are trying to figure out how they're going to go to work whenever their jobs are calling them to go back into work instead of work from home, you know, because they don't have child care and nobody wants to do child care because of because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and now with the Delta variant, it is more infectious. There was a report on CNBC saying that the people with vaccines actually carry more of the virus or something like that. It, I think which, that was dismissed by most of the, was the legitimate medical experts. I, I mean, you, you can, you can tell a story with, into it that yeah. much. I, again, but it, you're right, I'll, the Delta I'll be variant. completely honest, uh, on, uh, honest here is that it was a headline thing. I saw it. Yeah. CNBC's, yeah. You know, it, you know, I didn't go and research the damn topic. Oh, I know it was, it just happened over like the last day or two. I, I told totally yeah, him. Yeah. And so the, talking about that, even the people with vaccinations might not be getting as sick. The vaccine is actually helping with the symptoms and making them less severe, but the ability to uh, transmit it and, and cause reinfections with other people is higher. 
Um, I'm pissed off I about think, the Delta variant either fucking way, man. Like, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that it's how do you make something that is already one of the most contagious viruses even more contagious? Get the fuck out of here. Now there's a whole new thing in the Lambda strain. Uh, have you heard about this one yet? No, man. It's in South America. And the Japanese study is saying that it's resistant to the vaccines. <laughs> we, we've got to cut off. We've got to cut off the land. No travel. <laughs> you know, and if that's the case, we're fucked. Well, if everybody would buy a fucking boat, just like I said earlier, then <laughs> we'd be fine. All right, Mitch Wall in 2024, buy a boat. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I mean, I would love a boat, honestly. I would absolutely, and I don't get seasick, you know. So that's a plus. At least I don't think I do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm glad you thought of that. That was the least of my concerns. <laughs> you, you don't think about that. Wouldn't you be pissed if you bought a boat, go out in the water, and you're so ready for it, but you're <laughs> you're the most seasick individual? <laughs> so is that? And, and forgive me, I'm not a uh, a navy man or anything, but. Uh, seasickness doesn't like last don't you get used to it maybe that's not the case again not not a pirate i don't know i know that when i traveled one time there was a girl because i was on a, a ship for like 24 hours it wasn't was like very long huh was she the one no i fucking wish <laughs> i would have been i would have been holding her like rose on the titanic oh <laughs> 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 yeah, anyway so she was sick the entire 24 hours that she was on that boat. And so you might be right. You might get used to it, but I think it's one of those things where you get used to it after like a week of hating your life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't plan on going on a boat for that long. If I'm going on a boat, I'm going for the day, coming back to land <laughs> and then going I out do. again the next day. <laughs> I'll sleep on a boat for a day or two and then I'm good. Yeah. At most. Yeah. And I don't mean just like I go pick boats and sleep in for a day or two. I, I I'm invited. <laughs> No, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So let's let's uh, you know, you less about COVID and more about where the job market is now and where money is now. I am so nervous about what the next chapter is. Do people finally come back to work? Or does everything actually open up? And by actually, I mean being fully staffed so you can actually open up. Or does everything maintain the same and this is the new norm? So I think that we're getting ready to find out. And the only reason I say that is I'm still kind of trying to decide for myself. I was I was pretty eager, actually, to get back into the office and for you know a day or two a week. Uh, because I have, you know, fortunate enough to be able to do kind of a, a hybrid model and spend the rest of it working from home in the meantime. Well, here comes that fucking Delta variant. and uh, You know, that's understand. It's more contagious, yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, a guy that I work with who uh, was vaccinated, he's contracts COVID. And I'm like, well, shit, that sucks. And over the last week or so, there's just been more and more reports about kind of the breakthrough cases. I'm still under the understanding, and again, I guess it depends on where you get your, your data from, that these are still truly breakthrough cases and kind of the, the less than 1% kind of a thing. But I'd like for that to be substantiated a little bit. And by somebody, I'm also kind of sick of everybody just kind of yelling at everybody. That's been. Yeah. I mean, th that's also the, what's become a problem. I think is it's a game of, look, the vaccines aren't working. People are getting sick. I told you so. And the other half saying, well, the, if they're getting sick, their breakthroughs and the symptoms are lesser. So get the fucking vaccine, you asshat. And there's no in between. Um, I've spoken a little bit on vaccines and what I thought about it on one of my podcasts. I think you said that you had listened to that. And that's kind of what sparked this idea a little bit. Um, I'm still under the same impression. I mean, they're now I just saw something uh, today that they're talking about the third shot you should get the booster and i think it's going to be like a lot of virus things i think you're going to consistently need boosters but the problem with viruses is that they mutate that's why we get a flu vaccine yearly because it mutates so much uh i don't see an end i don't think there is a covid end 
at the end of the day. I agree. But I mean, it's it's the goal of that is to kind of hedge the blunt force, you know, the of the vaccines. People who, let me first start by saying that I think everybody reserves the right to do as they please when it comes to a vaccination. And I think that's important. Uh, I also think that people have the right to choose what they feel to be sound, safe advice and kind of for the goodwill of others and prior to prioritizing that over a right um, and to each their own in that capacity. But is as <laughs> as far as like who's to blame here, I, I still don't feel like there's any one side that's the problem. I think it's a culmination of things. And so if we're going to have to get boosters on a regular occurrence, then, you know, so be it for the time being. We do it with the flu shots. Uh, people have pets. They give their dogs vaccines. I, I think I'm, I'm actually taking my dog in to get her, uh, her I think her fifth uh, Parvo booster shot. And, and that's kind of going to be done for its time being. And people don't bat an eye at that. I think it's important to protect ourselves from a health perspective as we can. I mean, that's why the fuck we've made it this far. That's why life expectancy is the longest it's been in history. It's because we know to wash our hands, don't drink dirty water, and occasionally get a vaccine. Yeah, no, but what is your opinion then? And I, and I truly am curious about this. Uh, you know, because there, vaccines are good work. The vaccine that we have now, I, I, I truly do think it's a miracle that it happened. Okay, you have a vaccine made within what nine months and put out. That's fantastic. And and if you want to go into the science of it, RNA vaccines are actually a thing that's been made. It's just sequencing the actual uh the the strain of that virus and being able to punch it in basically into a vaccine that or a code that's already been made. You're just punching in the code basically, um, in layman's terms. So this isn't anything new. I think the problem with a lot of the issues with the vaccines at the beginning was that everybody was so worried it was new and it was going to put a microchip in them. This is technology that's been around um, and they made it work. I think I think it's worthy of respect and admiration for that happening. Whether or not you want to take that virus, I think it's still a great feat of science. But anyway, with that said, I just thought I'd put that <laughs> disclaimer out there. No, I'd like to take right? full credit. I got vaccinated. It's it's because of me, <laughs> you know, and you did. And I, and I, and I did not, you know, and I have a lot of people saying I should. Um, uh, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you, but I wholeheartedly respect your decision, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. And I, and I respect that your decision to, to actually take the vaccine. I respect anybody's. I, I just think there are different situations based on statistical data of, of who we are now as people. Um, and who needs them? I think elderly people and people on the front lines absolutely should use them. Uh, I think we, you and I, don't necessarily need them due to our age range and our general health. Uh, I think maybe taking it now might make it easier for you later in your future, where maybe it won't affect you as much later on. And, you know, so, and, and either way, okay, the the next thing that happens is the vaccine passport. What is your opinion on that? New York is now going huge into this. You can't do basically anything of entertainment without it. There are some places I just saw, you know, for, for those that are listening, we're in the Missouri area. So Kansas City Chiefs are a huge, huge deal. They just released something saying some fans in certain areas will require a vaccine. I didn't actually read the article. Again, I just saw that headline while I was scrolling through Facebook, but I'm assuming it's like a VIP lounge close with other people, the high, you know, the high value targets, some might put it. All right. Um, what, what, Mitch, tell, what is your opinion on that? Well, I mean, it just kind of shows the, the one lane thought that, <laughs> that we always tend to, to rely on. All those things are deterrences, but deterrences to uh, those who are choosing not to be vaccinated, so to speak. That's the same thing we do with our laws. So that's, that's why we assign punishments and fines to them. They're all deterrence. And uh, there, there's just, I think there are appropriate protocols and appropriate places that people can kind of do things to a, a normal degree. I, I also, on the flip side, think that there's places where that's not the case. Um, I don't know for sure yet necessarily what all those are. Uh, 
entertainment, I, I suppose that it makes sense that they might require it. Those are, you know, it's a, it's a, a show put on an entertainer if they so choose that this is how they want their show to go. And um, same thing to the business owner. If a business owner wants to enforce those policies, then I think they have a right to do so. And I support their uh, their decision of doing it. However, if there's a business that doesn't want to implement those, uh, and employees, of course, reserve all the rights that they have today. If they don't feel safe to work, they certainly don't have to work. Uh, but business owners ha- have a right to choose. Um, I, To your point on New York, though, uh, it's only a matter of time, I think, until we start seeing like the higher education institutions, at least some of them, particularly on the coast, start following suit. Uh, I think we'll see the same thing with a lot of large corporations. And of course, there'll be those that, that don't. And this is, of course, going to be some other politicized and uh, highly contested and debated thing because it's different schools of thoughts. Um, I don't know yet the right answer, but what I do know is that as long as the business owners, uh, those who are making decisions at the city or the county or the venue level, whatever it might be, as long as they're truly making it in the spirit of trying to do the right thing and what's going to keep folks safe, uh, I, I think that's what we kind of have to hope and what we kind of have to ask for. I mean, that's that's kind of the part of being a society. That's just being a good American is just trying to think about others to a degree. Yeah, no, 100%. I I agree and disagree in a, in a certain level where the, the where I'm looking at it is <clears throat> I'm so COVID exhausted. Even having this conversation, I'm exhausted. I am too. I'm ready to talk about <laughs> something <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, I, I am too. Can we, let's do a hard pivot. Let's go to a yeah. different subject because, I mean, and, and just before we do that pivot, I mean, that's what it is the entire time. It's been COVID, COVID, COVID. The news has been COVID, COVID, COVID. The, I, I tried to put on some of my the shows that I used to watch, whether it be some hospital shows on you know, or whatever, and the new season starts and it's COVID, COVID, COVID again. <laughs> like, I I watch these these shows that get away from it. Yeah. Not in I mean, and they had these big things where they were showing thanks to all the frontline workers, which I appreciate. Like, you know, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Shout all out the to all they the put, frontline workers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they put their lives on the line, literally. You know, but also that's what they do day in and day out. That's what they signed up for. COVID didn't change that. They have to worry about running into those type of situations. Well, more often well, now, but in general, they had to, it. Yeah. you know, more. Yeah. More than any of us ever will. You know, so I'm always thankful. Not just now. Are you the, the, those you're the most thankful. <laughs> Not the most. <laughs> Nobody is as thankful as I am. I'm the most thankful. All the people I know are the best of the healthcare workers. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I do miss Trump's speech. <laughs> best you've ever heard. Everybody says it. You know? <laughs> Nobody does it like I do. <laughs> <laughs> they said it never could be done, but I washed my hands. <laughs> I am the storm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the... the that was just pure entertainment. It um, was, man. Anyway, well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, there was a reason that he was successful um, on The Apprentice. Um, <laughs> he was an entertaining president. I will yeah, give him abs- that. And he was hey, a funny guy I'm, before he became president. Then he became president. And he honestly, like- honestly, if you watched like his rallies and stuff, if you ever like tuned in for like the like even five minutes, he was just. He did it like it was a comedy sketch. He kept it loose, man. He always kept it yeah. loose. Yeah, dude, that's an understatement of the fucking yeah, century. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Biden's uh, and, events, and those are kind of just like, man, I wonder if he's going to finish I this I fall asleep before he does yeah. during his speeches. Sometimes, though, he gets a little passionate. Like, I thought he was going to smack Trump in the face, and he told him to shut up during the debate when he brought up his oldest son. Uh, well, yeah. And, you know, and it, it, thankfully, it showed that he had something together where he could be i would be defensive over that too yeah you know no matter what the allegations are if there's any truth to it even if you're even if your son becomes the biggest piece of shit known to humankind you're still gonna be protective of him right no matter what i and i'm not i'm not trying to speak of any truth or legitimacy to anything that was said of it all right i don't want to really get too far into that but you should get defensive over that if it's your child yeah anyway hard pivot go okay can we talk a little bit about what's happening in the nfl right now are you in the what in the nfl 
the National uh, Football League. No, no, I know what it is. Okay. Um, what is happening? Well, all right. So it's been an absolutely crazy off season. Uh, we've got Deshaun Watson, who's we're waiting to oh, find out what God. the fuck's going to happen. Well, there. Okay, so that, that are you talking about like the all the bullshit going on with all the people now? All the bullshit, all the who who's going to end up starting for who is Aaron Rodgers? Man. You know, he's finally shown up and it, and he's he's going to play. But man, for a minute, I was kind of like, I'm what telling, the fuck? no, you were worried because of all the fake and the fake headlines that were going on. Yeah. Um, let me tell you something: is that I don't believe any of those headlines, and I think Aaron Rodgers just let them all play out. Oh yeah, man, because he's cool. I don't. I, I think he just let everything happen, and I don't think any of it was honestly true. And he just let it all play out to see what would happen on the. Because if it worked in his favor, it worked. And if it didn't work, he could say it wasn't him. It was a win-win situation, no matter what. Yeah. So he didn't have to say anything. All these press things all came out, and then Aaron Rodgers is like, "Yeah, I'm good to go. Let's let's do this." Yep. So no matter what, he wins. He that guy's a fucking winner. That's all. Right? He, yeah, that's all he kind of does is 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 win. He's a he's a stud. Speaking of studs, though, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, the future greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, it, I mean, that is a that is one of the craziest stories to watch is seeing somebody get drafted and the first game they play was week seventeen as the backup. They come in because we had essentially a bye week. He got to play for what was it? Half, he played the whole game, did lights out on his first actual NFL game, did great. And they knew at that instant that was going to be their next QB. The next year they go in, hit the playoffs, don't get into the Super Bowl. Following year, third year in with a brand new quarterback and you're in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And you win the Super Bowl. Fourth year in, you go to the Super Bowl and you lose it. And I truly don't think that loss is based on the quarterback. That was a whole team loss. That was not reflective of the Chiefs. Actually, I I uh, called Mulligan. Nobody fucking heard me. I was like, this doesn't. Well, count. I think I think you you could see if you looked on the side lines and saw Andy Reid, his head was in a different place because of all the stuff that going on with his son. Yeah, he was not there. His my he wasn't even calling the plays. It was uh, what's his face next to him, the offensive coordinator. I forget his name now. He interviewed, I think, actually for the Texans. Eric Bieniemy. Um, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, it wasn't Andy Reid wasn't there. They didn't have the leadership there. There was only so much that one quarterback could do. They the team didn't show up, and and that's that. But that's past history. Let's talk about this off season. Patrick Mahomes, greatest future quarterback, future, future greatest quarterback of all time. Sorry, uh, outside of his personal life, he's going to come in and dominate. I just saw something on uh, social media. Travis Kelsey, I guess, shaved his beard. He's got a baby face. Uh, looks <laughs> looks younger than us. So Great. things are going well for us, already. clearly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and you know, and what I actually like about Patrick Mahomes to go back to him for this uh, bandwagon riding son of a bitch that I am is that um, <laughs> not only is he signing up with the franchise for the uh, Whataburgers to come into Kansas City and going to be helping run that franchise, he is a part owner of the Kansas City Royals, part owner of the um i was about to call them the wizards but sporting kc oh, man the wizards yeah. you don't do you remember oh, the wizards yeah, when they were the, the wizards? wizards yeah uh, <laughs> but no but, but uh also a part uh owner of the sporting kc i think that is and his wife now that, owns the women's kansas city soccer team really i yeah. actually did not know that yeah that, and that's fine and that shows i think when you are a part of the community in that way i think it shows so much more about who you are in general and it shows that you are there for the long haul, which I think I appreciate more than no, I haven't seen as much dedication from any other sports player in Kansas City. I mean, as yeah. Patrick Mahomes, yeah, yeah, other we, than George Brett. That man, he was kind of an asshole from what I've always heard. Always heard he's kind of an That's asshole. That's fine. People. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for eighty-five. But, other, uh, but but otherwise. Um, uh, so what what else are you looking at at the NFL? So I'm in a dynasty uh, fantasy football league. Are you familiar with that? Keep your picks. Yes. Kind of forever. Okay. Um, For those that don't know, the dynasty leagues are where you do a long term league. You're planning on doing these fantasy leagues for several years. It's not just a one year and then you move on. Uh, when you pick people, you're also planning on keeping them for the long haul, keeping them for the next season, uh, and that's where. You know, you usually have a rookie draft every year where you get to draft in some rookies. Um, and then 
depending on the rules of your dynasty team, some people have to only keep a certain amount of players. Some people will do it where they keep their entire team. Uh, and so there's a lot of options that you can do in Dynasty. It makes it makes fantasy football a little bit better. And really, this would be a great placement, uh, DraftKings, if you're listening, for a ad for your website. <laughs> yes. So uh, DraftKings.com. <laughs> <laughs> I would you would do fantastic in this spot specifically. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so. Uh... That was a wonderful plug. Let me just say that. I, I, <laughs> millions, I'm sure, is what that's worth. <laughs> Everybody just went to DraftKings yeah. just so, to see what they can do. So you made the comment. You're right. You want to have a, a young rookie quarterback. I've got Jalen Hurts, a Philadelphia Eagles, who showed up at the end of last year. Uh, was for He did really good from a fantasy points productivity perspective for like being when he first got in. So I'm excited like to see the last- Five or six games, though, right? Yep, yep. I'm excited to see what he's going to bring. He's a runner too, so he he has the potential to throw up some some Lamar Jackson points from a couple years ago. However, uh, my other just quarterback, for the record, I do want to say that I think Lamar Lamar Jackson is one of the most overrated quarterbacks known in to history. I put him on par with Colin Kaepernick on overrated uh, overrated quarterbacks because uh, it, it I think it was the same situation with Colin Kaepernick is that nobody expected what he would do and so they couldn't plan for it and once they figured him out it shut him down completely whereas same thing with lamar jackson he went balls out all over the place he can run he can throw he can do whatever um and i think he started getting figured out and then i don't know i put on the pro bowl just for or yeah the pro bowl just for uh shits and giggles uh, it was one one of the days that i watched and i watched him try to do an accuracy challenge and to be honest, that's where I'm getting a lot of my information. Because I was like more, <laughs> more <challenge>. disappointed <laughs> in his accuracy whenever you have like a noodle arm like Peyton Manning still yeah. able to do it. But Lamar Jackson wasn't any – was like the lowest scoring person. I, he he could sucked not last hit. year from a fantasy. I actually – I traded yeah, him. Yeah. He was my first pick because I was like, who do I want? I want a, a young – I was second in the draft. First guy picked I up my home. I took Lamar. I guarantee he's worthless again. Probably. I think I traded him to Jesse. <laughs> 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 uh, but you know that might work out for him hopefully it does i've also got joe burrow who i think had a stellar first season is going to be something yeah, special i've got uh I, I feel pretty good at halfback where i'm i'm needing an opportunity is in wide receiver so uh, i'm gonna give you three seconds for a hard pivot to another subject three the go the two. do a say what oh <laughs> three seconds to <laughs> to pivot to seconds. a new subject Three seconds to pivot to a new subject, and you don't want to talk about sports anymore. We're going to move away Three, from the football, two, and I one. do want to talk about the college education system right now is actually completely blowing everything away. The problem right now is that we're so caught up on how much we're paying. Now, so first of all, you have the bribes that were going on that got caught where you have all these people getting into college uh, based because they were able to say, uh, I think there was a Netflix documentary even about it about to come out um, where they were saying that they were part of like their uh, rowing team so they could get a scholarship to oh, go to yeah. college for free and shit, shit and get into college. Um, and, and But the problem is if I were rich, I'd probably do the same thing. I'd want my kid to get into one of the good colleges. If I had that opportunity, I'm not going to lie. I'd probably take that opportunity if it was given to me. I'd just if open I had my that own money, college. You know, and so I... I, though, am more worried about the idea that we are so focused on pushing people into the college system that we are completely overlooking where their talents and their skills would actually be beneficial in their own lives and to the lives of society. I think we are overlooking trades and technical schools. I think we're overlooking the idea of the military and the benefits that you can have. And without, you don't have to be a frontline worker, as you like to keep saying all night, uh, <laughs> but a soldier on the front lines, you don't have to be a grunt to be in the military, but you can get a proper education through the military. You can and learn other life skills. Um, and there's a lot of more on the job things that you can learn that'll go a lot further than just going to a college Um that you're paying out of pocket for in way too much money. Uh, you know, take it away, Mitch. So brilliant segue, by the way. You, I mean, you just let into that. You're going to be very pleased with yourself when you go back and listen to that audio. Okay. You're going to think, <laughs> man, I'm really good. Um, <laughs> Thank God. 
I don't think going to the army is the solve all for everything. You made it sound really glorious in that capacity. Uh, it is an honorable thing. And I, I do have a friend that uh, served and he said that there's a lot of people that went there uh, to get the dental insurance, the dental work. So you're right. They do have good benefits. College, college, college. So my little sister drove to college yesterday. Unfortunately for her, her, uh, her engine blew in her car. You know, it was a whole family affair getting her up there. So she'll, she'll spend the first like 10 days without a car in college. Things are off to a great start for her. Um, she's going to a, you know, a, a fantastic university. Um, I went to a college, uh, got my degree. I think that there is a lot, a lot to be said for what a degree, uh, can do for you, especially if it's a specialized degree. Um, beyond that though, that's not, the ceiling anymore. That's not the only avenue to success. And I think you were spot fucking on trades, trade specific tenure experience. The longer I work, the more I, I am in my career, the more I realize that yes, a degree, a certification, some sort of a, a class registration. Those are all great things, uh, but you really can't replace experience. Experience goes a long way. And that's why people who have experience are typically worth more from a, from a, you know, a compensation perspective. Somehow I ended up working in finance and compensation, and um, <laughs> I could tell you that uh, it's 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 a really interesting story to and what all goes into determining uh, what quote unquote somebody is worth from a compensation standpoint. Um, there is more money to be had typically in kind of your white collar roles, but it doesn't always come with uh, that gratifying feeling of the sweat dripping down your brow at the end of the day. And I think that trade schools, uh, unions, you know, pipe fitters, plumbers, all those things. I mean, those are all admirable dental assistants. I mean, it, it's, it's what works for your life. I, I think that there's, we, we need so much. This is such a consuming society society and we need, we need everybody, you know, we need everybody to do something, including my word of the night, our frontline workers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, phrase of the night, not a word. All right. Um, the, you know, trade schools like electricians, like millwrights, uh, plumbers, <laughs> millwrights. <laughs> it's just not the first thing that would come to mind. I don't know why it makes me laugh. <laughs> but you know, your your welders, all the all these different things, engineers of all kinds. You know, the electricians and plumbers especially. You need those everywhere. You look at HVAC, you know, people that, that you don't even usually need a school. You just need a certification. Uh, a lot of computer programming. You don't need a school. You need certifications. You can go to school for a lot of computer stuff. Um, but again, I think you're 100% correct is that experience on the job far is out, far outweighs that. What I've realized, though, now as we're getting into this new society, it's almost the problem I'm seeing is that the entry level requires these degrees. So you, you're you forced to go to a school to study something, and you might not even use that degree for what you're studying. It's just the fact that you went and wasted your time and got a degree. Is it a waste That's of time? I don't think it's a waste of time. Okay. Uh, a waste of time might be a – might be dramatic, but I think, I the, think college the... – I think college is more so useful – and learning how to network and learn some life skills. But I do not think whatsoever that is necessary to get to the next phase in your life. Totally agree. It is not necessary to get to the next phase in your life. It can be uh, a springboard, but so can all those other things uh, be a springboard into a career, uh, graduate, go get a job <clears throat> as a, uh, uh, you know, as, as the shop guy, you know, sweeping, changing tires, you know, whatever it is, work your way up. You're the, you're the shop foreman. Next thing you know, you're, you're the, uh, you're the general manager of the, the new shop that's getting open across town because they're expanding. I mean, people can grow. And that's really the remarkable thing about people in general. If we can just pause people who are willing to truly work hard, uh, it's okay to bitch and moan. I've learned, uh, but people who are willing to work hard, come up with solutions and get the job done, are typically going to be successful unless they have some serious misfortune or unluck. You don't have to have a college degree to do that. 
You don't have to have a certification to do that. You just got to be able to roll up your sleeves and put in a little elbow grease. Back to the point, though. Uh, college, man, uh, it's it's a nice springboard to, to, to making some bank, but you can't just have a degree. You, you've got to show up and you got to deliver work. I've worked with folks that, you know, have, have well, most people I work with have degrees, but I've worked with some folks that I, I wonder how the fuck they got a degree or, you know, <laughs> why the fuck they were emailing me. But uh, kind of is what it is. I guess that's my crux there. You know, and I, you stayed in school and you got your degree and I played around too much. I even went back a couple times and I never got my degree. But what I did do is continue to work, Mm -hmm. work my ass off and continue to move up. And when that's where the experience really put through. And now look at you, you're finally using your degree to something. No, I'm still not using my degree. No, you are now because you're on my podcast using oh, your communications, public yes. speaking. <laughs> communications. <laughs> but otherwise, you're not even using your degree for <laughs> what what you actually planned on. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that right there is a very common thing in general. You have a lot of people graduating with degrees, but finding jobs that they're not utilizing the knowledge that they learned from school and, and more so are learning new life skills and learning new things because they're just getting whatever job they can at that point. Right. And so maybe that's good for them because it makes you grow as an individual. You're learning a new trade in a sense and you're learn, learn, learning a new skill. But you're talking about like the the college is a great springboard to start making money. Except are you making money if you're paying off all your debt? Because very few of the people had their school paid for. Mm. Very few. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that's not a thing that doesn't happen. Some people get through and have it paid through scholarships and grants. But most people are... Like me, Dead student loans are a bitch. It. Yeah, those uh, I hated paying those off after I graduated. I, you know, and and frankly speaking, eighteen year olds don't have any idea what they're signing up for. Uh, yeah, man, I got forty thousand when I graduate. No problem, dog. I got you. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> that's you know that's not the case. And I, you know, I think about people who are in medical school, and I think that's that might just be the root of all problems as to why doctors and hospitals and things in the medical industry are so expensive is because they got to pay doctors so much because medical school is so goddamn expensive. No, no, and that's actually a true thing, and it continues to go up. I mean, now, granted, a lot of it is also due to the insurance companies and whatnot, and that's a whole nother uh, segment that we can do. We'll do a hard pivot. But, yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but I will say that at, you'll notice as all the college prices go up, all the things related to whatever that college might specialize in will also start going up. So whether it be healthcare prices will start to go up, uh, maybe some computer services go up for the people in computer science, maybe some agriculture uh, services. I don't know what the hell liberal arts degrees do, um, but I'm sure those go up. So there's, um, I I finally figured out the answer to that. (laughs) Did you? Yeah. um, It's, it's kind of like the new way of, of, learning material or studying material it's usually going to have kind of more a uh, social um, texture to it versus your traditional method of learning which is you know kind of what what we all grew up to if we went to a public school in the 90s there wasn't a much a bunch of liberal arts methodology behind it my son's school actually almost shifted to a liberal arts program and I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with them learning Latin or, you know, it's not Latin, <laughs> it's, you know, elements of I was like Latin. Yeah. That's intense. That's, yo, get me signed up. Yeah. But no, I mean, there, there was actually some, some language elements. I don't know why the hell I said Latin to go. To, it's been a dead language for a long time, but uh, <laughs> you know, they ultimately ended up not doing that because the parents pretty much overruled that idea. Uh, and, and, you know, I preferred what was happening now because that, you know, don't, don't try and fix what's not broken. Things were going well as far as I was concerned. Uh, but it was interesting. Um, sorry, I, I completely digress. But now you know what liberal arts are. But, you know, it is such a difficult time now, especially because people are trying to go back to school and they're trying to live their lives. Some of them have to get the vaccines to go live these lives. Now, what happens to all those people that didn't make it through or realize it's not for them and now they're in debt? 
I was fortunate enough to understand where I was at and look at it in the correct way where I could pay it off and use my money in a intelligent manner. I know a lot of people are not capable of that though. So in my opinion, we're basically building a society that is slaves to the debt. See, I, I disagree with that as college being, um, a root in the problem. It's a symptom, perhaps folks like that in colleges to learn a, a curriculum, a program, a specialty, a skill set. I, and, I shouldn't and, say it's a, the root of the problem. That's not what I'm trying to say by any means, yeah. but I, it, I think it is a large problem. And I, the reason I think it's a large problem is that we focus so much on just sending these kids that don't know what they want to do with their lives to college and hoping they figure it out in time before they graduate instead of, looking at it a more pragmatic solution to where they can actually do something with their lives, with the skill sets they might already know, or do something that more interested them or that'll bring a more livelihood. Sure. So <sighs> sorry, if you felt like I was attacking you earlier, I didn't think that you thought it was the problem of the root of all evil. <laughs> Look, we're, we're, what I was going to say on that though, is that, it's not college's job to teach people to be responsible uh, and to think about things critically and analytically and to not spend their money on whoa, stupid whoa, whoa, shit. Whoa, hold on, hold on. I'm going to cut you off there. What do you mean it's not the college's nope, responsibility? Nope. That's what I was saying not, is college. They're... Nope. Bye. But but so then they need to put that in the public schools then because they're not teaching no. that in public schools either. Nope. Work ethic, is, any of them. Work ethic is, is not something that is school's responsibility work. to teach. No, 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 no. You just said two different things. No, I One didn't. is work ethic. No, I work I would ethic. Not put those in the work, same thing. Work, it's about work ethic in elementary school, working hard, studying, making good grades so you can grow up and get a good job, right? That's what we're told. Well, when you get to college, you go in there for uh, a specialty, a program, a curriculum, uh, an area of focus. You don't go in there. I mean, I realize that there are probably some weird, arbitrary classes like this at places like the like Greendale on Community, but <laughs> but uh, you don't go in there and take classes of like how to spend my money wisely. Uh, you oh, can take okay, finance so, classes, and no, you're 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 100 percent right. Say that again. Sorry, my mic cut out. Uh, I'm not sure. What... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, they, I, I agree with you. The, the colleges should not baby you and hold your hand through that. Yes, hundred percent. But what about the, the the education system before that? Should they not be teaching you life skills? The education system, if if back to to me being uh, president again and, and making sure people get <laughs> boats, <laughs> get your boat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I could be president, the the one. And single solitary uh, program within my government that would always get a budget increase and would be completely immune from cuts would be education, and not just for public schools, for private schools, um, of of for for all you know uh, religions and and belief systems. That's an investment. We're not we're doing a good thing, you know. That, that I'm glad that people know how to read, but that is not enough. We need to introduce what you were talking about, these trade concepts. We, we need to have introductions to finance. We need to have introductions to, to, to becoming an English teacher. I mean, folk, kids should have an opportunity. All kids, inner city, rural, suburbia, all kids should have uh, an equitable opportunity, you know, access to the Internet, all that kinds of stuff. Uh, I, and there's barring nothing. I mean, that's I feel that strongly about it. So. Yeah, I think that there's probably some things that you could probably do to help kids look at things through a certain lens. But in a public school system, you have to be careful about what lens you try to get people to look through because it is the public school system, meaning there's lots of opinions, people coming from very different backgrounds. Um, you don't have that same kind of a, a problem, so to speak, in like a private school, as an example. You go to a private school, you understand you're, you're paying what you're you were specifically sending your child to a school with an understanding that it's going to be raised and, and taught everything in the in the Catholic teaching. You don't get that in a public school. What 
one faith or one person from one nationality or one person from across the street believes and thinks what they want for their kid might be very different. I, I think that's be a tough thing to dial in. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I just want to let that sit there for a second because I think you spoke that very well. Um, I would agree with you on most of what you said. I also agree with the idea that it is a public school with a lot of extra opinions. But what I worry about is if we do not have a good set standard for what we want to achieve, then we will always drag behind. And it already shows, and it has shown for many years now, that we drag behind in a lot of concepts mm -hmm. with our education system. So I think putting our money into the education system is great. I think that's a fantastic idea, and it's something that we need to continue to do. I think we need to stop cutting funding, start adding funding. And the problem becomes the proper disbursement of that funding. We have so many issues of we have, people just buying. You don't need, I don't think a school needs to buy the new textbook every year. Why should we be using textbooks anyways with technology? I mean, with technology, exactly. But then you go with the problem with where the schools are. You know, schools are paying just as much for the ones that are going to the technology side because they're having to pay yearly for certifications for certain programs that they get to use that are approved by a certain school board over the state which is then also run by a school board over by the country and so there is a lot of bureaucracy between where the money comes from and where the money is actually going to in a sense i agree and there's always there tends to be bureaucracy associated with money and government programs but there's there's a there's an efficiency that comes with it there's a, a cost of goods sold savings with it i mean materials we're not having to uh, deforest the world to print textbooks materials outdated i mean in all reality science is is true until it's not and, until the next person comes along and, and, and changes it and, and there's a need to keep textbook and information updated it again if 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 there was not risk of budget cuts and there was always an increase and and th there would probably be some places where there might be wasteful spending and uh, that just kind of that kind of comes with it and, and that's why we we manage things but that, that shouldn't be a concern I just I feel pretty strongly that every little kid that argues about what time they have to go to bed should have access to the technology that we want them to be using as an adult you know and, but I do think we should still teach people how to how to write in cursive. Otherwise, how do you read your fucking bill of rights? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the <clears throat> well, they have a printed edition. I don't know if you looked online. We're going to technology. The of <laughs> but the the problem is you can't realize. So I'm kind of an old school person. I love technology. I mean, you're looking at this video call and behind me, I don't know if you can see there's a mounted TV on my wall. There's an Xbox controller over on the computer. We're using a Zoom call with internet. We're using my desktop PC that I play new video games on. I just got a new microphone not very long ago, which I honestly didn't work on our Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to use my <laughs> older <just> old one. <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. But, you know, I love technology. I am the first, I have an iPad um, and I don't even like Apple. All right, but I wanted an iPad because I wanted to try it out and to see if I would like Apple. Did right? you? you know, by the By the way, do you like? Did you like Apple, or are you still an Android guy, or perhaps a I am an Windows? I'm an Android guy, but I do enjoy the iPad, and I think there's a lot of user friendly things. And, yes. but it took a little bit to get used to. They have the best ecosystem. Um, I'm an Android guy too, but Apple has but, the best ecosystem. But I don't see myself moving fully over to an iPhone still, not yet, at least. Yeah. Uh, just to touch on that, one more one more thing. Also, the Google Pixel phone is one of the reasons I will not lose leave Android for an iPhone. 
the fucking uh the 4 XL whenever I had that was the best phone I've ever had. My 5 uh my Pixel 5 was good, but I ended up upgrading or it something happened and I had to change phones and I went to this damn Samsung S21, worst phone I've ever had. <laughs> I remember years. you being an HTC guy. Yeah, until they shit their beds. Yeah, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened over there at that <sighs> company. Yeah. But but I'm excited for the next Google Pixel phone because that phone is going to be phenomenal from what it looks like so far. And I'll probably, honestly, even though this phone isn't paid off, I'll probably get rid of this and go to the next one, uh, the next Pixel. But the Pixel phone is just so well made and made around Google where I don't give a fuck about an iPhone at that point. The only time I've ever even thought about iPhone is whenever I've had this phone currently with the S21. Um, and it's because it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Samsung, so, this is not the place to put an ad. <laughs> <laughs> Samsung, you did not get an ad here. <laughs> but I digress. Um, I'm pretty sure I was about to go into something. Um, I forgot because I went on to a Google verse. Did <laughs> man, you were you were getting ready to, to dive into the uh, to the pull up bar, so to speak. And there was something that was being said. I'm sure. <laughs> <clears throat> There's even tape to prove it. But, uh, no, technology. I am under the old school thought of, while I love technology, I'm still old school in habits. I prefer the textbook over an ebook. I prefer reading a hardback copy of a book rather than reading it on my phone. I don't mind the audiobooks. It's because your eyes haven't started to go yet. Oh, never mind. Your eyes already sucked. <laughs> my, eye, my eyes are awful. Yeah, all right? right. And you know what? I've been thinking about getting reading glasses just to make them a little bit less awful on top of my contacts. Can you get LASIK eye surgery? Is there some reason you have I do not qualify for the basic LASIK eye surgery. The best option for me is actually getting a cornea uh, implant where they would replace the actual natural lens of my eye. It's like what? One from a cow? No, with like just a fake one, a plastic one. But the problem is once they do that, once they cut the natural lens of your eye out, the muscles no longer work on focusing. So you have to have one for near sight and one for far sight. <laughs> so I said, why, no, thank you. You don't. Why don't you qualify? What's wrong? Or is it just uh, that's not the problem? That it's just I face? have that bad of vision that it, it goes out of the realm of LASIK. Where LASIK could do some benefits, but it's not going to do anything for me. Generally speaking, do you prefer to wear contacts or glasses? If you're sitting at home, chilling out on a Sunday, not having to work, you know, just just whatever. I actually prefer my contacts overall because I grew up with glasses for my entire life. And then I went to contacts and I've always thought I looked better All right, on an ego and a pride level. I like I prefer the way that I look without my glasses, um, which boosts my self confidence. But also now, so it goes kind of both both ways. Uh, I don't like doing my contacts all the time because sometimes my eyes get dry. Yeah. It's better without my contacts <laughs> if they dry out. Seeing you come or, to work one time and you had to wear your glasses and one of your eyes was as red as the devil's dick, man. It was. Yeah. It was yeah. Just, you looked like just, you were in pain. Yeah, no, and and you know, and that and that's from never taking them out and never changing them and stuff like that. And then I put on glasses, and because of the way that my eyes are and the way that my glasses are, everything's a little bit more magnified, so I can actually see things better because they're bigger. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but the problem is when I look at myself in the mirror, I get past the uh, the fact that I'm wearing glasses. I don't think I look as bad now that I'm older in glasses. But then I'm like, fuck, I look huge. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to get back in the gym. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, uh, so because it, it just, I mean, everything's bigger. So it, the problem, though, is that then you have this giant perception difference on your peripherals. You can't see your peripheral vision very well. And then you have a cutoff where there's just a bar from your glasses and you end up Having a cutoff and you can so you, I, I like being able to see everything at the same rate, I guess I yeah. would say. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Uh, um, and just I think for a convenience factor and 
I touch my face a lot and I need to stop doing it, but not having glasses is, is nice, but I think it's, wearing glasses also isn't a big deal. I think on average people touch their face like 46 times an hour. Yeah, it's bad. Isn't that I'm real crazy? bad about it. I love my face. I touch my face all the time. <laughs> That's why I still get <laughs> acne as a 32 year old. I love it. But the problem, I, then I have another problem where I just pick. I'm a picker. Are you a picker? No, I definitely don't pick at my face. What do you, what do you like? Well, pinch not your at my cheeks face, or... not like some fucking meth head. Yeah. But I mean, like, but I mean, like, but if I end up having any issue on my face, like if I had a pimple or like a blemish or like accidentally cut myself, but I already pick in general, like I'll pick at my skin at like, or like a nail that's like there, I'll dig at it. But if there's something at my, on my face, I'll just keep going and going because I just, I have to, like I chew on my lips. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tactile person. That's how I would describe you too, as a tactile person. Always up to tactics. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, that's tactical. Yes, I know. That's why it was supposed to be funny. Speaking of funny, I did, I did want to read, uh, this one funny dad joke that I saw. And I thought that this would be a good spot to do it right after the DraftKings ad. So. Cop pulls the lady over. It says, it says here you're supposed to be wearing glasses. She says, I have contacts. Cop says, I don't give a damn who you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> I knew that I, uh, I too laughed too hard at that. <laughs> That's why I'm so disappointed in myself <laughs> right now. There's there's some dad jokes, and I've I've really grown into the dad joke realm where I'm disappointed in myself, but then I embrace that disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I just kind of accept myself. Or you. I guess I accept you. But I do think we're at a very good spot to put an end to this. Um, if there's anything else you want to say before I do the sign off, go ahead, Mitch. I am definitely game to come back on. I was as we were doing this, I was kind of thinking it might be fun to take like a part in the interruption approach. Did you ever watch that show on ESPN? No. Basically, uh, we get a there's a series of topics and random as to which one's going to pop up in this version, and then we've got we're, we should just be assigned a side to a side to debate whether we agree with it or not force ourselves to take a different perspective. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And I think we need that's to add a dad joke in somewhere, everywhere, always. I think that's something we should definitely try out uh, on a future episode or, or, you know, and I think there's a lot of opportunities there for just, just for having fun. I mean, that, and that's part of what I, why I'm doing this is because I want to have fun. I want to have a good conversation, but I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I'm not doing this just hating my life. All right, I don't do this just because it's a burden by any means. I enjoy having a conversation. I enjoy having a conversation with you specifically, um, and and I and I like the ability to spark, uh, hopefully, other conversations and other thoughts for for other people, and hopefully, they want to chime in on something. Um, so thank you so much, and I think that's a great idea. We should try that. But thank you so much for joining me, um, and anybody that's listening, make sure that you go to the Facebook page and go ahead and like it. Follow that if you can. Go on, on Spotify, follow us on, or follow me, not us. Mitch isn't officially part of the team yet, but I'm trying to get him on it. All right, make sure you hit that follow button. I am on Apple Podcasts as well as Google Podcasts as well as uh, Pocket Cast, which I recently learned is a thing. You can also <laughs> listen to your podcast based on my analytics that I look at. But thank you so much for listening. This is Evan, and this is Mitch with a discussion series on the lemons with Clemens.